So good evening, everyone. My name is Rodney Foxworth, and I'm a writer and consultant in Baltimore. So this is great. <laughs> this is a photo of me from 1990. I really want you guys to take that in and think about how cute and adorable I was back then. Um, since that photo was taken, I think that Baltimore, Baltimore and myself have shared a lot in common. I've had a little bit of a decline. Um, so as I, as I said before, I was really cute at six, not quite so much today. Um, that, that sweater was really outdated. As I, I don't think anyone should be wearing that kind of sweater today. And if you are, I apologize for offending you. Um, but the big point, though, is that Baltimore lost a lot of uh, residents during that time. So what happened? As we know, as Joe pointed out, actually, we lost quite a few people during um, the eight, the, through, uh, through, throughout the 60s up. But the 90s was the first point where we actually lost quite a, few, uh, quite a bit of uh, African-American families. So we have a long list of, uh, of symptoms. Uh, bad schools, crime, high vacancy rates, and high concentration of poverty, right? So actually during the 90s when I was in school, we had two-thirds of all uh, elementary school students. They were actually two uh, grade levels behind in our reading and math. So we've all seen the wire, and according to the wire, we have directionless youth, we have a lot of vacancies, and we have drunk cops trying to solve, solve homicides. <laughs> now, based on all that, you might think those are our biggest problems. However, I don't think that's the case. I think we, have, we suffer from outmoded and outdated uh, thinking. For example, we need schools renovated, so we try to fix that with a bottle tax. A really, really small uh, thinking, in my, in my estimation. Um, so we also suffer from uh, population decline and loss of tax revenues. What do we try to solve that with? IndyCar, or better yet, we try to build a hotel. There hasn't been a hotel in Baltimore that we don't like. <laughs> so I did not go to the Grand Prix. However, I do understand it was great. Um, it seemed like it was a fun time, and it could have been worse. We could have been known for NASCAR instead of the wire. Um, and of course, this is our publicly owned hotel, the Hilton, which we still don't know our return on. So what's next? Uh, so let's talk about being a, having a $900 million public-private partnership for an expanded convention center, new hotel, and new arena, which I think we do need all those things, but we really need to consider where our money can go. So to put it in perspective, the Baltimore City school system has about $2.5 billion in renovation needs. It even befuddles uh, George Bush, Bush, our former president, something that admittedly is not too hard to do. So here are our options. We, to attract 10,000 new families and retain our current residents, we can either build a new hotel, uh, continue with expanding the convention center, and also building a new arena, or we can put that money into rebuilding schools. Thank you. Thank you. Now, John Norquist, who is a former mayor of Milwaukee, says that places that have gotten in trouble are the ones that spend way too much money on convention centers, stadiums, and malls. It sounds quite familiar, right? It sounds a lot like Baltimore. Now, even Forbes magazine has said that, has argued actually, that public investments in large projects are bad investments. This is for, Forbes magazine. They're really trying to, they've actually, there's a lot of debate about whether or not these large investments make sense for cities. Now, I think right now Baltimore is being a lot like the Yankees, at least the old um, retirement age posse. And like Tom, I'm really hoping that by the time we leave here tonight, or actually by tomorrow morning, they'll have been swept by the, um, the Detroit Tigers. Oh, good. Great. So what's wrong with Baltimore? I don't think there's anything wrong with Baltimore. I think we have a lot of problems, but there's a lot of things that we can do to solve those problems. I think the real big thing is that our thinking hasn't changed in quite some bit. So if you can't tell from this photo, this is a wonderful photo of Mitt Romney back in the day when he was working at Bain Capital. Uh, now, I don't think actually all of our decision makers look like this, but for some reason, I do have them in mind when I think of this photo. Now, what about all the rest of us? So we're a very diverse city, and we have a lot of uh, assets within us, right? Um, and so one of the things is we need to really think about what are some of the things we can invest in, both in our neighborhoods and also invest into our citizens. Now, when you really think about $900 million, it's a lot of money. So what can we do with $900 million? Quite a bit, actually. I thought about this. We could actually give, so the mayor has a plan for 10,000 new families. We can actually, in, we can give them $90,000 to come to Baltimore. If we really want to get really ambitious, we can actually have 100,000 citizens come in with $9,000 a pop. <laughs> now, I think that we really need to stop thinking about these large, big, splashy projects and really start thinking about our neighborhoods and our people and, and start reminding ourselves that they're assets as well. 
So even though the title of my talk is about thinking big, really if we start thinking small, we can start having a much bigger impact in our city. And if you want to hear more of my rants, you can follow me on Twitter at rdfoxworth, or you can follow my blog at rodneyfoxworth.com.